Hello and welcome to Political Bazaar. It's uh, well past four. The Amadi Party has held its victory rally to discuss the day's developments, how the votes have, how the trends have gone, and more. With me, I have Gaurav Chaudhary, the executive editor. Thank you, Gaurav, for coming on Political Bazaar. Now, Gaurav, I think you would uh, agree that all of us like roller coaster rides. There is a time when you're anticipating, you know, it's just going up. You don't know how it's going to go, and then the sudden rush. That's right. The day has been much more like that. In the yeah. beginning, it was. It looked like, you know. It was hard to call. In the you know in the beginning, BJP was getting about 15. Then it went up to 22, 25. You know, leading in a couple of seats, and then suddenly a drop. Um, and now it's more or less clear that you know the uh, of the 70 seats in the in the Delhi Assembly, the uh, the Amadi Party will be winning and keeping 63 of the seats. Seven seats will go to the BJP as of now, more or less. There, your thoughts on this? Well, while it was a roller coaster ride to some extent, but at no point in time during the course of the counting throughout the day uh, was the Aam Aadmi Party in any kind of threat that they might lose these elections. It was only about the margin of victory. In the the number margin of, of victory, and of course, uh, some of their key candidates. Correct. So at, at, at no point in time, they had fallen be below the 35 uh -huh. mark. In fact, at no point in time they, did they fall below the 42, 43 mark. Uh, in fa and their seats kept on acting. And they consolidated very rapidly once the later round of Countings took place. Uh, there was, as you said, there's some of their key stars, stars, uh, and key candidates like Manish Sisodia, Deputy Chief Minister, and Atishi, uh, were trailing for a couple of rounds. That would have caused some degree of anxiety within their ranks. But as the later round, the counting, the later round started, they consolidated rapidly, and BJP was nowhere in the picture. The key thing here is that BJP is also has some, uh, can also take something from these uh, elections. In terms of uh, gain in vote share, mm. they have actually gained close to 6%, 6 to 7% yes. vote share, uh, which is quite a big jump if you come to think of it, uh, notwithstanding the, uh, the number of seats that these have translated to. Uh -huh. uh, and also the Congress. Uh -huh. Congress appears completely decimated with a 4% vote share and many of the almost uh, close to 70 of their seats contestants are likely to lose depos deposits. That is something that the Congress, I mean, con well, the Congress seemed to be celebrating, but I think it's, it's as, as one of the leaders said, that it's a time for introspection and somebody pointed out actually it's a time for action. Maybe it's a time for some very strong action because if Congress doesn't have any chance in Delhi and doesn't look like, uh, it, it has it'll reflect it could reflect nationally particularly in the among in, in the morale of uh, of their rank and file which is something that they have to look at seriously we talked about this earlier so do you think with this result now it's safe to say that um, elections in delhi are now a two party contest and the tripolar contest which it was expected to be or once it was is no longer the case with congress being out of the equation absolutely and it has Actually, the tripolar polity only started in 2013, huh. uh, when when uh, the first time the elections took place, where Aam Aadmi Party uh, yes. contested, and they were a very uh, novice party, so to speak. Uh, now they are six years more experience. Uh, they are they are two years more uh, more in power, uh, two times more in power. So that experience really count. And 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 uh, political organizations, as you would know, and history shows, uh, evolves rapidly when you are in power. So this will this will help them. Help them crystallize into a far more, you know, uh, stronger and more efficient force politically within Delhi. The question, key question for Amadmi Party now, however, is to how do they extend this to other states beyond the national capital? And uh, they can take the uh, development template to sell, make a sales pitch, but. It, as we have seen in the case of Punjab, Amadmi Party promised. Uh, there was a lot of promise that was held out, but they delivered a little bit less on 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 the on the lower side. You know, they they would have expected far more seats to come. At one point, they were seen as a front runner to win the Punjab Assembly elections, but that did not turn out. So for Amadmi Party, having rested Delhi well and truly home, now is the time to consolidate to other states. Maybe the states neighboring Delhi could be a good starting point. But that may not be that easy because caste and identity politics actually are, they are big, main, strong they are, factors. They are in the, the main opposition in Punjab at the moment. They, are, they, they so, are the main opposition in Punjab. So maybe Punjab is one ground that they, they should, you know, one one area, one state that they should really try to consolidate politically uh, and see uh, whether they can, uh, you know, extend it beyond Punjab and, uh, and, and Delhi also. Uh, but UP, we're two, 2022, we're two elections in UP are just two years away up should now actually try and consolidate because Noida is next door. So it's it's the closest uh, to, to to Delhi. So And that is something that up should now try and look at. Um, let's look at the BJP's tally. They have won, uh, they, are all, they are all certain to win about seven seats. Uh, 
these uh, two of them are <clears throat> from the ones they won in 2015. That is Rohini and Vishwas Nagar. Yeah. And uh, they lost to Mustafabad. What do you make about this? The five new seats they have won. Do you think this is, in a certain way, the campaign has helped them, or is it, um, you know, plain anti-incumbency that has gone in their favour? No, it is not anti-incumbency. Uh, <coughs> On these is, five seats. Yeah, so pro it's pro-incumbency <coughs> for for Ahmadmi Party and uh -huh. Kejriwal. Kejriwal clearly is the man of the moment here, and uh, they, nothing can take that away from him. Uh, uh, BJP, please also remember, BJP fought these elections about nine months after the BJP wrote to a landslide, unprecedented landslide in the Lok Sabha elections and with where, the, they swept, 50, where they swept with all the seven seats, Lok Sabha seats of Delhi with a more 50, than 50 percent. 57, almost 57 percent of the vote share. Vote share. And from that, and if, if assemblies, if, if that was divided into assembly segments, BJP, BJP could have uh, probably ended up winning 60 seats, but oh. that did not translate. So it tells you two things. One, uh, the voters of Delhi are clearly uh, distinguishing between whom to vote for in Lok Sabha and whom to vote for in the state elections. And clearly they have a, they, they are intelligent enough. Uh, they have demonstrated that that distinction uh, they are going to make. And that is something that the BJP will have to take the lessons from. Uh, clearly, as we, we had discussed in the morning, mm. this is very similar to what happened in Orisha where, during the Lok Sabha elections, where Lok Sabha elections and state elections were held simultaneously. And BJP did remarkably well uh, compared to the previous position uh, in the Lok Sabha elections. But actually, Navin Patnaik romped home with, uh, with, with a very easy victory so far as the state assembly elections are concerned. And that is, that is again, the voters distinguish between whom to vote mm. for nationally and whom to vote for the state elections. This is something that the BJP will have to look at very seriously. But also, important for, for it's important for BJP to realize and recognize that this is a state where, which gave very three tall uh, state and national leaders. Oh. Uh, Sahib Singh Barma, Madan Lal Khoura and Shushma Swaraj. Uh, they were in power. They don't have a local leader. Of they that don't state. have a local leader of that stature. That stature now, uh, who can be, who can, you know, great, can be a great mobilizing rallying point for 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 the party workers. Uh, the fact that uh, the home minister of the country, Amit Shah, actually expended so much of political cap capital in the run up to the election, uh, run up to the elections in Delhi and in Delhi, is clearly uh, demonstrative of the fact that they need somebody locally. Otherwise, I would not have ex one would not have expected the Home Minister to spend so much of time and, and raise the stakes for uh, BJP in these elections. Uh, two questions. Let's look ahead from here now. Um, the results are more or less there, but two questions looking ahead. Do you think by the national BJP's national leadership getting involved and um, aggressively in this election, you think they've exposed themselves to a certain extent? That's one. The next thing is, do you think the Delhi election verdict will have a... Uh, ramification beyond Delhi in the upcoming elections. The next is Bihar elections, which is a good six months away. Yeah. Do you think uh, it would have any ramification? It's di it's difficult to say, but if you if 2015 is any any lesson, uh, uh -huh. 2015 is any any precedent to look for look to look towards, uh, it could have. In 2015, uh, the BJP lost the election and won only three seats in Delhi. Mm -hmm. The Ahmadmi Party, uh, you know, came became victorious with 67 seats. Uh -huh. Uh, a feat they almost matched this this time around as well. And in 2015 November, uh, in Bihar, the Mahagadbandan yes. uh, of uh, Nitish Kumar's JDU and the RG in the Congress actually uh, won a handsome majority yes. to form the government and defeated the BJP. Uh, but it remains to be seen to what extent the same conditions persist in Bihar. Okay. Because Bihar, the, 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 the issues will be very different from what the election issues were in Delhi. Uh, clearly, there will be some degree of uh, sentiment, uh, which uh, the BJP, uh, it, this could ha this could have some degree of uh, you know impact on the morale of the BJP workers. But as I said, in a state like Bihar, caste identity and religion, uh, caste and uh, religion-based identity politics will probably take primacy over many other issues that would have dominated during the Delhi elections. Uh, and and for BJP uh, or anybody who actually is, is seeks to form the government in Bihar. It would also be about the, uh, forming the right kind of alliances. And do you think the BJP leadership has exposed itself over here? Uh, I would not think so. For a, ba a battle which it was not almost certain not to win. Yeah, I would not think so. Probably be, they, they, <coughs> they took a chance, and they, the risk here was that to what extent they could gain uh, in number of seats and the extent to which they could gain number of votes uh, and their, their vote share could rise. So still, uh, please remember one thing: uh, the BJP's, uh, you know, the BJP's. Uh, number of seats that the BJP won would probably be critically dependent on how the Congress fared. If you look at 2013, the Congress got about 16% vote share and BJP ended up with 33 seats. It was the single largest party then. Uh, this time, BJP has won far more 
uh, in terms of percentage of votes poll, but the, that has not translated into seats. So clearly, uh, any party, if they are up against a party that has polled more than 50% vote share, it's always going to be a formidable and daunting task. The votes have been counted and there's a clear winner. From here on, it's the road ahead. It has to be seen how the Amadmi party takes it forward, what, the, what lessons the BJP learns, and Congress, what does it figure out from this results. For more news and updates, stay tuned to moneycontrol.com. Oh, <laughs> oh,